and Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. So actually Dylan's behind you again and typically I've been shutting him out of the room but it is so hot. I'm not closing the door to the library. I would melt. I'm already melting. I'm just like... So <clears throat> that being said, I have returned from Kentucky as you may have guessed from the previous videos and while we were traveling back home I stopped at McKay's and you know I've talked about McKay's previous previous videos I've never been before until now and so it was just like it's beautiful it's just beautiful not well organized I'm not gonna lie I still I never found the memoir section and Autumn was like oh it's over there I was like oh like yeah, I didn't even know that was there <laughs> so I'm gonna be talking about the books that I bought at McKay's I typically have a large outgoing pile of books that are either, you know, going to Autumn or they're going to other friends or they're going to be donated or they're going to go back and be sold to a place like McKay's. So that's typically what happens. And so while I do bring a lot of books, a lot of books go out. And so I have a lot of books that I shipped to McKay's. And so I bought most of these on credit, which was very exciting because they have great prices. They give you, they, they, I think they're pretty fair in that. So yeah. And the books that they didn't accept, I'm just going to donate to probably a little free library in town. So I think that is just a great way to spread the love of, you know, books, because that's why we're here. Now, I've been meaning to tell you guys about this for a long time, but I think this is a great opportunity because these are secondhand books and they come with stickers on them. And you know what I'm talking about. Like you go to a used book sale, library book sale, and you want to get the stickers off, but they're stuck and you can't do it. So the first thing I would recommend doing is putting them in the freezer. So that might sound a bit weird, but putting them in the freezer for like 10 to 15 minutes helps that goo like solidify and you can peel it off better. And then if there's still sticky stuff on there, I'm going to have to recommend Goo Gone. I'm not sponsored in any way, shape or form by Goo Gone, but my sister-in-law told me about this because she uses it because when you have children, there's lots of gooey hands and things and she was like you should check this out for books as well so goo gone it just is a goo and adhesive remover you can use this not just for books for other things and it um has this very small like dot in the paper there's a paper over this top and there's a small dot and you just put drops of it on the sticky and you let it sit for a few seconds and then you can rub it off or pick it off with your fingernail and it's great i use them on all of these books pretty much and it does not remove anything from the book if they dry you just have to like set them up and it's kind of like an oil oh so I got it on a page once as well and it dried clear so you know I wouldn't recommend pouring this over pages but you know it, it really works well and I just really love this it really is just perfect for cleaning up books and by the way it takes so little for this that I've had this for a year and that's all that I've used so it is a little expensive up front but it lasts a long time let me talk about the books that I bought and we're going to start with the lowest age group and move up because they have a great middle reader section. Um, I found a Dear America book that I do not own. Um, you might not have remembered if you are newer uh, but I love Dear America and I had a bunch growing up but I didn't have the entire collection and now you can find these for like three or four dollars a piece so I'm trying to find the entire collection and so I have like these Goodreads shelves for like the ones I own and the ones I have because I can never remember <laughs> and so I'm always like scanning the book on Goodreads and like okay what shelf is this one on and this is the only one that they had that I didn't own. I also collect the Royal Diaries and this is one of the Royal Diaries I didn't own. This is about um, Catherine the Great Journey, now Catherine the Great I'm assuming like you know who else would it be so so this is one of the ones that I don't have and so we're really getting down to the last I think 20 Dear Americas and 10 Royal Diaries that I don't have I'm not sure I need to go look but I'm making progress and now I'm, I'm struggling to find like the rarer ones and uh, I have most of the common ones that I see in news bookstores but it's really exciting to find one that I don't have and they're very inexpensive next up is um, the Madeline Langle. I have the odd number ones for whatever reason they only had the odd number ones of the quintet so I need two and four um, but you know A Wrinkle in Time is actually the first book in five a five book series so I have three of them now and they're in really good condition so I just need to go find the other two and I'll have a complete uh, collection. I didn't like this as a kid. I is the most DMF book ever. I tried to read it probably four or five times before I finally read it this year and I really enjoyed it so I definitely want to read the next one but I don't have the second one. We'll get there. But yeah, I was really excited to find them and they're all like three or four dollars a piece. It's great. 
Next is a middle reader author who's one of my favorites, and that is Claire Vanderpool. She wrote the uh, Newbery Medal winning book, Moon Over Manifest, which is one of my favorites. I already own that copy, but I found this hardback copy for like $6 of her second book, Navigating Early, and it's about a kid who I think he's on the autism spectrum, but he goes on a search for I think his brother with a friend. I'm not exactly sure. It's been about five years since I've read it. So I really enjoyed it though. And it's just a beautiful book. Also beautiful like cover and everything. It, I just love it. You might have noticed right above my head where that card is, I have several copies of Libra Bray's uh, Great and Terrible Beauty trilogy. And I have the paperback original ones I had as a teenager. And then at, at a library sale, I found the last book in hardback. So I've been looking for the first two and I found them in hardback at this used bookstore. And I was so excited because I, you know, those paperbacks are like disintegrating. They're not gonna last forever and this is one of my favorite trilogies, YA trilogies, and I re-listen to the audiobooks every few years and I just love them. Uh, this is just a fun series and yeah, so I'm just so excited to find and finish the series off with the hardbacks. So heading into uh, adult fiction, um, I was very disappointed in the Gold Man Booker winner, which was uh, The English Patient by Michael Ndache. Now, I do love that book, but women just are really given, you know, the short end of the stick when it comes to the Man Booker Prize. They're just not featured as prominently as they should be. And so there were two women up for the prize. And since I already had Hilary Mantel's, uh, I bought this copy of Moon Tiger, which was the shortlisted for the Gold Man Booker. Um, and this was like 50 cents. And it's in pretty great condition for a used paperback. So this is the book that I'm gonna be reading. And I really hope that the Man Booker promotes more women in the future. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just really just disappointing. You know, reading women still hasn't changed the stats on our front of our page of the most prominent book prizes and how they're, they're still going to men for like the last three years. So anyway, moving on, we have Jhumpa Lahiri, uh, Unaccustomed Earth by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is the second novel that came after The Namesake. And then I also have... The Lowland by Jim Lahiri. So I now have all of her books and this makes me very happy. Um, I am a bit of a completionist as you might have guessed, but also I love Jim Lahiri. I have yet to give any of her books anything other than five stars because I love them so much. So I'm very, very excited to read these books. So oh, I love these ugly covers of Jeanette Winterson's novels. <laughs> they're so hideous. Like there's this one with this like half naked weird angel thingy and then I don't know what's going on with that uh, at all but this is um, the passion and sexing the cherry and you know it was oranges are not the only fruit and then uh, you I think it's the passion next and then sexing the cherry but these are all hideous covers by Grove and uh, I, I love them and I don't know why but um, yeah I'm excited to read more Jeanette Winterson. I love her. I discovered her last year and I'm so thrilled to be able to find her. In the US, I feel like it's pretty difficult to find her books. Uh, next is the third book I've bought by Alice Munro in the last like two months and I've yet to read any of them. Uh, but this is Too Much Happiness. She's a Nobel uh, winner and a Man Booker winner. So she is just a really highly decorated female author that I definitely need to read. So I do have Dear Life is on my TBR uh, for this month. So hopefully I will have be able to report back and talk to you about Alison Murrow. Uh, she's well most well known for her short stories. Next is a book by Angela Carter, which is The Bloody Chamber. Um, I read The Magic Toy Shop when I was in grad school and I've yet to read anything else by her. But I've heard that she's definitely an author that sounds right up my alley. I just wasn't overly fond of The Magic Toy Shop per se, but now that I know more about her since then, I definitely want to check out other novels of hers and see if I mesh better with those. One of the books that Autumn recommended to me early on in our friendship is Carson McCullers' The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. This is her debut. And it's like a masterwork. I read this and was devastated. It is absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. And it's a book that I was just so delighted to discover. I haven't read anything else by Carson McCullers, but I didn't own this. And I found this copy for $2 and it had stickers all over it, which might be why it was so inexpensive. But with Goo Gone, I just took them all off and boom, like it was perfection. So I would definitely recommend this book if you haven't read already. It is just, yeah, it's just devastating. I love it so much. 
those are all the books that I got while I was at McKay's. It was a great trip up to see my parents. I was able to stop obviously at the bookstore. Dylan and Samuel waited outside the bookstore because obviously you can't leave Dylan in the car. So everyone's like walking into this bookstore and Dylan's like, everyone's coming to visit me. And he was very thrilled. So yeah, that's my corgi. Anyway, I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>